At the back of the main roof, rafters are being put in place, which run down to the original rear wall. The original roof is left as long as possible to help keep the house watertight. The rafters are birds mouthed over the pole plate which is above the ceiling joists. The hip section of the roof is starting to take shape. The hip timber member and the side rafters in place. The same hip looking up towards the ridge. Note the difference in positions of the pole plate on the existing and the extension. This is due to the different size of the ceiling joists. Timber sizes are often larger now than on some older buildings. The carpenter is considering putting in another pole plate to the existing part, although this one will not give enough of a bird's mouth to the rafter. The smaller roof to the rear extension progressing. The end hip being positioned. The smaller roof is built over the larger one on layboards. This is usually easier in a situation such as this than cutting in valley members. Bricked up openings from the inside. The internal chimney from the kitchen is removed. The metal liner was from its more recent use with a gas boiler although the soot deposits show it had been used for solid fuel. The remaining wall between the old and new is removed. The outer leaf had already been removed at an earlier stage of the project, hence only a single leaf wall remains. In many areas a house of this age would not have been built in cavity construction. Windows starting to be installed including some of the altered parts of the existing single-storey annex. More windows from the outside and the inside. Another section of the walling taken out between the old and new. Flooring starting to go down. Filling up to the wall Larger sheet type materials are quicker and more economical to install. Pipes to the bathroom and en suite running through the floor which is about to be boarded. Openings in internal walls partly in the existing building and partly in the extension. Concrete pre-stressed type lintels are usually used in this situation. They gain some of their strength by being bonded to the bricks or blocks above. Larger openings have steel box lintels. Looking up to the roof above, no purlins are in place, but it does not have the weight of the tiles yet. Some parts of the existing building only have a single skin of brickwork and have been treated with a waterproofing compound with stud work and insulation internally. Electrical wiring progresses. The corner of the existing lounge has been rebuilt on an angle to give easier access to the stairs. The new and existing parts to the first floor. The kitchen has been plastered and the kitchen units start to take shape. an internal partition being constructed. With the corner removed to improve access. The roof membrane. At one time this would have been felt, with the battens and some of the tiles in place. Valleys manufactured in fiberglass are often used. The tiles are cut as they abut at the hip which will eventually be covered with a hip tile. UPVC fascias around the edge of the roof. Using existing tiles on the front makes the extension less obvious. 
inside the roof with the purlins in place. The new boiler has been located in the roof. The pipework will need to be insulated. The roof between the two roofs at the back and the main roof and where it meets the rear hip. The roof is now complete at the front with the ridge and hip tiles in place. The new toilet in the downstairs cloakroom. Plastering continues, just the ceiling at this point. And in some rooms partly in the original and partly in the extension. The shower tray in the ensuite. And in the main bathroom. Plasterboard sheets are fixed to the walls with dabs of adhesive. Some plasterboard incomplete prior to a final skim. The ground floor is screed over a layer of insulation. This is often done by the plasterer. Internal door being hung and the wires from the ceiling are ready for the light fittings. And so the completed extension with some interior pictures. The bathroom, the master bedroom, the kitchen, the dining room, the lounge. and looking at the back from the outside. And finally the front where the use of old tiles and bricks makes it difficult to tell which is the extension. If you would like any more information on all aspects of home extensions please see our website www.home-extension.info